It's an exciting time to be a fan of the Blue Beetle, but this DC superhero wasn't always popular or accessible for use in other forms of media outside of the comics. In fact, Blue Beetle was once intended to appear in the famous and revered DC Animated Universe. You know, the interlocking cartoons that began in Batman the Animated Series and continued throughout Justice League Unlimited, but he never made it on screen because... I'm not gonna spoil the video immediately. It would take years of retcon after retcon and a pretty humorous legal loophole before Blue Beetle would finally be canon to the DCAU. Beetles can be kind of gross, which is why it's always good to have a trusty can of bug killer on hand. You know, like Raid? Shadow Legends. The ancient prophecy foretells that once you get a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship, you've reached full YouTuber enlightenment. But I'm actually upset at how much fun I'm having playing this game. I downloaded it to get some playtime in before writing this up, and uh-oh, I've played a lot of medieval battle games in my time, but this one just, I don't know, there's something about it. It looks complicated, but really isn't. It walks you through everything from the start, and it plops you into the campaign already feeling like a badass. It has you choose from a handful of champions up to Top, so I of course chose booby lady and then you're right in the thick of it shooting lightning arrows and bad guys faces like Legolas If he got struck by lightning that had already bounced off of Superman the fact this runs on your phone is insane The minute I booted it up. I was convinced I must be watching a video. I don't know how they do it It's like magic, but it's also on your PC and your progress carries over between devices I didn't know that until just now This is very good news for someone like me who spends most of their time either on a phone or a computer The guys are gonna flip look I I know there's DCAU fandom crossover with dragons and castles and whatnot. You got orcs, you got undead, you got lizard people. You can't tell me you don't like all those things or you're lying. You can play locally or online with over 700 champions to choose from who you can endlessly customize with weaponry, armor, skills, and more. It's addicting. I like it. Like I actually like it. It's fun and good. You can participate in the Hydra Clash, a competition against other clans to see who can do the most damage to the Hydra and win some pretty cool rewards. It doesn't appear as though you can get up on the Hydra's back, so just throw as much stuff at its face as you possibly can. For new players, you can get your hands on Stag Knight, one of the best epic champions around, I'm told, as well as a custom skin you can get by using the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th. It's as easy as that. Don't worry if you're not a new player, you can still get Stag Knight and the skin through an in-game event. That must be quite a computer game. So what are you waiting on? Me to stop talking? Okay! Go download Raid using the link in the description or via this handy dandy QR code on screen. You'll get bonuses just for using our link, so don't just go to the app store like a normal person. We are talking an epic champion, Talia. That's like this lady from the uh, De Rachel Ghoul's daughter or something. And other useful things. And come find me under the name Jamie Streck. I'll see you on the battlefield! I tried to warn him. To get our heads in the right space for Blue Beetle's place in the DCAU, let's refamiliarize ourselves with his evolution in pop culture over the decades. The character has been published in comic books in some form or another since August 1939, when he first appeared in Fox Comics' Mystery Men Comics No. 1 by Charles Nicholas Wojtkowski. Dan Garrett was a rookie police officer who used Vitamin 2X to gain super strength and agility. He wore a blue suit, bug mask, and m'lady hat, directly influenced by another classic pulp hero, the Green Hornet. Both were colorful insects, after all. It's the Green Hornet! Shoot him! But those similarities were too obvious, so Beetle soon exchanged the suit for superhero tights with a beetle-like texture. Dan Garrett's Blue Beetle persevered for over 60 comic issues throughout the 30s and 40s, received a newspaper comic strip, some of which were illustrated by a young Jack Kirby, and appeared in a radio serial titled The Blue Beetle, which was primarily narrated by popular radio and film star of the time, Frank Lovejoy. The show, often told in two-part, 15-minute segments, ran weekly on CBS for 48 episodes from May to September 1940. Fox Comics was eventually purchased by Charlton Comics, who in 1964 reinvented the superhero as Dan Garrett with two T's, no longer a police officer, but an archaeologist who gained superpowers upon discovering a magical scarab during an expedition in Egypt. Dan Garrett t transformed into the superhero Blue Beetle whenever he said the magic words, Kaji Da! It's no Shazam, but I guess you can't pick your magic words.
if I had to pick my magic word, it would be zeeble you, but I'll never ever reveal why, and you're just gonna have to live with that. Two years later, in 1966, Charlton followed DC's lead by revamping their Golden Age heroes for the Silver Age, and put an even newer guy in the Blue Beetle costume, changing many more letters of his name. Ted Cord was a genius inventor, skilled athlete, and owner of Cord Industries, which he transformed from a tech startup to an industry giant. Cord was known for his bug-shaped airplane, appropriately called The Bug, in which he impractically used a rope extended from the cockpit whenever climbing in and out. He's like Spider-Man, except he can't shot web. And also several other differences, like he's a beetle, not a spider. Cord remained the Blue Beetle for decades, and even teamed up with Dan Garrett to on an adventure or two. When DC bought Charlton Comics in the mid-80s, they used Crisis on Infinite Earths to fold the characters from this Earth-4 into the main continuity and integrate Blue Beetle into their vast history, where he became a member of the famed Justice League International shortly afterwards. Everyone is aware that the Watchmen are, are the Charlton guys, right? Uh, but Blue Beetle never had sex with Maul and Ackerman inside the bug, to my knowledge. And to round it all out, Jaime Reyes, a teenager from El Paso, Texas, was the next and most recent dude to become the Blue Beetle when the events of 2006's Infinite Crisis brought him into contact with the Scarab, which was actually an alien device called a Reach Infiltrator designated Kaji Da... Oh, I see. Silly me. So with all that out of the way and knowing Blue Beetle held a storied history across decades of comics and the radio show and all that, where the hell was he in the DC animated universe? Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil! Nah, nah, that's a different guy, you silly beans. Throughout the DCAU, and especially in Justice League Unlimited, we got a ton of DC heroes ranging from household names like Green Arrow and Aquaman to super obscure I've never heard of this guys like Buona Beast and Nemesis. How come seemingly high-profile Blue Beetle couldn't make the cut? Well, let's take it back to 19 1993, just one year after the premiere of Batman the Animated Series. BTAS's fast-growing popularity amongst the youngins saw Bruce Timm's signature style imitated for Superman and Batman Magazine, a short-run book full of comics, games, trivia, superhero spotlights, and other fun kid-oriented DC stuff. Blue Beetle appeared in issue number one on the back cover, piloting his bug ship, and again in number eight alongside the Justice League lineup from the comics at the time, which included Wonder Woman, John Jones, Captain Adam, and a bulky shoulder-padded Green Lantern er, boost Gold. But sadly, these issues don't really count as proper DCAU canon. This magazine was essentially an early version of the DCAU in that only BTAS existed at the time, so there was no way to accommodate so far in advance for what would eventually come later in animated series like Superman or Justice League. That's why we have inconsistencies like Superman's fetching yet priceless mullet, and this Justice League's roster more closely reflecting the lineup from the Justice League International era. Like, just imagine these guys showed up in 2001 to fight the not Imperiums. So, despite Despite this book just establishing a DCAU Justice League out of the blue beetle, including the blue beetle, this Ted Cord unfortunately does not canon. Oh, but just you wait, for he will try again! Blue Beetle's next attempted DCAU inclusion was in Adventures in the DC Universe from 1997. You can see Ted Cord on the star-studded cover of the debut issue with the rest of the Justice League, including B-Tas Batman and S-Tas Superman, and a miscolored creeper who looks like the Joker. We, uh, we confirmed that's Creeper when we interviewed the cover artist John Delaney a few years back. Thanks, John. But Blue Beetle had a featured story in issue number eight titled, well, here's another fine mess you've gotten us into. Blue Beetle and Gr Booster Gold find themselves in immediate danger as the bug threatens to squish them. <laughs> Kinda ironic, you see, because usually we squish bugs. They flash back to what got them into this mess, where we learn that Booster came to Beetle with a job prospect to assist a zillionaire in salvaging a sunken submarine. I'm just not gonna make any comparison. They take the bug, which is kept rent-free in the Justice League's garage, to Hub City and make their way to a Belly Buster Burger fast food joint. Probably a major competitor with Big Belly Burger, the BK to their Mickey D's, when they notice a woman in distress. Beetle leaps down to the rescue where he's mistaken as the turquoise tarantula, which gets a <laughs> from Booster, but uh, he's one to talk. I thought you were Green Lantern. Beetle brings the woman on board the ship to escape a group of killer robots, but little do they know, the woman is also part of the robot gang. She shapeshifts out of her disguise and uses a mechanical hand to take charge of the bug airship herself. She crashes the bug onto the heroes and we catch up to where the issue began. Right before she's gonna kill him, Beetle regains control of the bug and crashes it into the robots. Beetle and Booster finally make it to their job, only to discover Superman passed by and pulled the sub from the river all by himself. To add insult to injury, the issue's backup story features the question
Washington catching the tail end of the aforementioned events surrounding Blue Bug and Buster Brown. That seems right. While this story certainly could have happened off to the side during the events of Superman the Animated Series or what have you, so many other things in the AITDCU series contradict versions of characters who would eventually appear in the Justice League cartoon. Simply put, this comic featured the animated series takes on Batman and Superman, but accompanied by the 1990s versions of DC Comics characters at the time of publication, hence why we got the Grant Morrison JLA or characters like Connor Hawk or Connor Kent. All to say that the series does not canon with the rest of the DCAU, so Blue Beetle still doesn't fit, but boy is he trying! This trend would continue for a couple more years in the print world, like when Con Edison published a special in 2002 that featured this amazing wraparound cover by artist Min S. Koo with so many cool characters. Justice Leaguers, modeled after the first season if we're going by Superman's cheekbones, and we are, alongside familiar faces like Nightwing and Supergirl, as well as a bunch of new fellas like Impulse, Firestorm, and various characters from the JSA, Outsiders, and Titans. And wouldn't you know it, Blue Beetle is front and center kneeling next to Oracle, who he had a flirtatious relationship with in the comics of the time. But since Oracle was never an element in the DCAU proper, and a lot of these guys look drastically different than how they would eventually appear on screen in the DCAU, we have to chalk this one up as non-canon too. I mean, it's just a, a magazine cover or whatever, so I, what, leave me alone. Minescu was a regular artist on the Justice League Adventures tie-in comic to the animated series as well, which would also often include characters in different designs or styles than how they would eventually appear on screen, prime examples being Kronos and Amazo, and truly most of the folks on this double-page spread in number six. Blue Beetle was supposed to be featured in an issue of the series, as evidenced by these pencils drawn by Christopher Jones. But... When I was doing the, the Justice League Adventures comic, um, we did a story that Keith Giffen wrote that was going to be the introduction of Blue Beetle and Booster Gold right, yeah. into that continuity. See, that was, uh, that was the one that got canned, right? Yeah, yeah we, and we just about were done with it. I mean, I was literally delivering the last of the pencils when they got word that Booster Gold was going to get used in the show. My thought was, well, so what? They had kept the Atom appear in the comic before he showed up in the show, and it was a little different, and right. no and one then, cared. Uh, he's right. I just flipped through all 33 issues, and uh, this story is nowhere to be found. So again... Not canon, because it didn't even happen. Why can't the damn turquoise tarantula catch a break? Well, when we got to the Justice League Unlimited show, you know, the one they even gave friggin' Nemesis a backstage pass into, who the hell is Nemesis? We got that foretold Booster Gold episode, The Greatest Story Never Told. But his best buddy Blue Beetle was unbearably bypassed besides. In Wizard Magazine number 173, producer Bruce Tim actually went on record to explain the character's omission. We really would have liked to use Blue Beetle, especially when we did that Booster Gold episode. The rights weren't available. We wanted to do a Phantom Stranger story, but we couldn't do that. We wanted to do the Spectre, we couldn't use him. Those were the main ones, but it's fine. It's not like we don't have a zillion other characters we can't use. That's true, like Nemesis. What the hell is up with that? I wonder if Elongated Man's role alongside Booster in that episode was initially written for Blue Beetle. Though, funny enough, we do know the episode was originally intended to feature Firestorm instead of Booster Gold, like presumably with a floating Professor Stein head instead of a floating Honey Nut Cheerios bumblebee, so it's likely that Beetle never even made it into an early draft. But okay, why were the rights to Blue Beetle unavailable. DC didn't seem to have any problem publishing Beetle in comic after comic after comic during the early, now extremely retconned years of the DCAU, so what kept him away from TV? Seems Bruce Timm would have certainly preferred to use Beetle in background cameos over some other characters. Nemesis was way down on our wish list. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I don't think he was even on our wish list. I think he was on a list of rights available guys that DC gave to us. He is a unique type, so we said, what the hell, put him in this show, we need bodies. I would much rather have had Phantom Stranger, Blue Beetle, etc. But they were off limits for whatever reason. <laughs> oh man, that's a classic. Fuck you, Nemesis. Writer-producer Dwayne McDuffie also explained the overall rights issues around some characters in his own words. Certain characters are approved for use on the show, but this can change at any time. We have to ask every episode. Sometimes there are other deals with the characters, sometimes there are rights issues, and sometimes DC doesn't want to do anything with the character at the moment. With Blue Beetle, we were told it was a potential issue with the radio show rights owners. It just wasn't worth opening that can of worms. But 
Why? Why? The radio show came out when my grandpa was a four-year-old, and JLU came out when I was 13. That's over six decades later. What studio exec in their right mind would find any cause for concern with that? In 2013, friend of the channel John Trumbull wrote a Facebook post bemoaning how lesser-known heroes like Vibe and oh gosh, uh, this character whose name could use a more inclusive update had a spot on JLU, but the likes of Plastic Man and Blue Beetle were sh** out of luck. Several years later, the post resurfaced and director Dan Reba chimed in with some answers. Blue Beetle had a complicated legal issue. Charlton's claim to the character was a little um, iffy, so DC needed to tighten things before letting anyone adapt him. The comics were deemed okay as they were pretty under the radar, but a TV show or a toy was too high profile for something that might require some kind of payout but they did the legal legwork and either paid off any heirs or found there were none, and Charlton's claim to the character was legally binding. Well, somebody should have told 1999 Hasbro not to make a Blue Beetle action figure then. Whoopsie! So DC's legal ability to use Blue Beetle outside of comics, even after folding in the character's world in the 80s, was still just so up in the air that they didn't want to risk it. Fox Comics had sold the rights to the radio show, then sold the comics characters to Charlton, then Charlton sold them to DC, it all got pretty hazy. However, by the time DC reassured themselves they did have access to use Blue Beetle, and he went on to appear in high-profile TV like Smallville, JLU production was all wrapped up. Even their unexpected third season had come and gone in its entirety. So Blue Beetle never made it into the DC Animated Universe cartoons. Once again, not canon, never canon, no Blue Beetle, get out of here! The JLU comics, on the other hand, you know, the medium nobody had a problem with Blue Beetle existing in, kept on running past the end of the show all the way until 2008, and just feast your eyes on the cover of issue number five, Monitor Duty. <laughs> Duty. Meet the League's Strongest Hero? This issue was drawn by Carlo Barberi and written by Adam Beechin, who wrote a good chunk of these JLU comics and is also well known in DCAU corners for the Hush Beyond miniseries. Mr. Cord sits on Watchtower Monitor Duty, bored to tears with five whole hours to go until Green Lantern, the actual Green Lantern, not Booster Gold this time, relieves him. And since he is most definitely and legally books, not hip hop, he regrets not bringing any reading material. After Beetle putters around the Watchtower for a while, Several pounding booms draw his attention away to check who's, like, knocking at the door of a satellite. We find General Eiling, aka The General, floating outside, who then punches himself inside with a candy gram, saying it took him a long time to meteor hop his way back after the League ditched him out in deep space. Don't worry if you're confused, this isn't a reference to any past DCAU events, but actually the General's first appearance in Grant Morrison's 90s JLA comics, which saw the League banish the General to a six mile long rocky needle in the heart of an asteroid belt. So, already off to a bad start continuity wise here, come on Beetle, get in here, we need you in the DCAU and you keep doing this to us! <clears throat> DC's Red Hulk proceeds to beat the living crap out of Blue Beetle over the next few pages, which is pretty impressive for Beetle, I do declare, with Eiling even calling out at one point, Get back here, you blasted butterfly! Obviously, he doesn't know the turquoise tarantula by name. The real Green Shady arrives to relieve Blue Beetle, but he gets bashed in almost immediately. Beetle knows he can't call for help or take on the general by himself, so he heads to the League's wardrobe storage room, where Dr. Fate's helmet is just carelessly on the floor, tisk tisk, and grabs the flare gun and some flares from Green Arrow's quiver to propel the General into a sensory overload seizure, finally taking him down for good. Beetle reveals how Monitor Duty gave him time to think and strategize, and while GL runs the General out into even deeper space, Beetle happily puts in Monitor Overtime, finally appreciating some time alone. JLU number 5 here was published in January 2005, over a year before Eiling first became the General on screen in JLU's Patriot Act, so his continuity really is all over the place and we... <laughs> <laughs> we can't consider this to be the same canon as the cartoons. Why, Beetle? Why? They wanted to let you in. The welcome mat was right there. Maybe, maybe he's in other issues of the JLU comic? Let's see. Uh, issue 8, he's hanging out with Booster on the Watchtower for a sec and helps fight the bad guy. Uh, number 10 is mostly about the Creeper, Jack Ryder, but it has a quick scene of Beetle fighting the Mad Men, which are some of his oldest classic villains. That's cool, I guess. Number 12 has him get caught in a Mirror Master trap. 13 has him help Batman save a poodle and an old man during a Red Tornado rampage, which prompts him to ask if that makes him the new Robin. It does not. Number 20 puts him in Fawcett City for 
for a fight with Captain Marvel villain Mr. Adam. Don't make me explain the Captain Marvel name thing, you understand. Number 30 has a quick glimpse of Blue Beetle on a watchtower monitor screen while Speedy walks by. 31, he's in a crowd of a bunch of other heroes in this mysterious purple chair room. And 36 has Question investigating several conspiracies which lead him to unravel an alien invasion of the Durlands. Beetle attends another debriefing. Ooh, he actually does something in this one. In number 34, Superman goes into the Phantom Zone to figure out why it's weirdly bleeding into the real world, but when he doesn't come back, cause like General Zod's in there doing bad guy stuff to him, the League, including Booster Gold, follows after while Blue Beetle stays behind on crowd control. And, uh, no, tech support. He, he's better than that. We love Blue Beetle. All my homies love Blue Beetle. He ends up activating the Phantom Zone projector to bring the League back to Earth, but in what may be a lettering error, he tells himself, Beetle, get the projector offline, in dialogue that was likely meant for Batman, or he's just really good at self-talk. Mr. Mixia Spitlick appears to reveal that he was responsible for all the chaos, while Beetle is unable to deactivate the projector, which unintentionally zaps Mixie into the Phantom Zone. Accident? Yes. Blue Beetle being the hero? Also, yes, what a guy. Looks like he was featured again in Palindromic Issue 43 and, oh sh**, this is that Chris Jones Justice League Adventure story that didn't happen. Yep, there's the credits, Wannabes by Keith Giffen. It lives! We see the future site of Star Towers, luxury condos from M. Lord Enterprises, obviously Maxwell Lord, who eventually appeared on screen in the JLU episode Ultimatum. Life is good, but it can be better. A group of supervillains calling themselves the Demolition Team wreck the tower's construction site. Meanwhile, Blue Beetle tells his super buddy Booster Gold that if they stop these guys and make names for themselves as superheroes, they could petition for League membership. Endorsement deals, film options, and the whole works for a big potential payoff. This get-rich-quick scheme is all Beetle. But unfortunately, the actual Justice League arrives and engages the Demolition Team first. Blue and Gold jump down to help in the fight, considering it to be an impromptu audition, but accidentally get pegged as accomplices. After explaining themselves, Green Lantern tells tells them there is no fortune with the League, and the only fame they get is secondary to the responsibility and personal price for their powers. Luckily, even though the bad guys got away, Beetle tagged one of them with a bug tracking device, and he's confident that they'll have them in custody before you can say Teen Titans, which is a cool, albeit annoying, name drop to that never-seen off-screen team of unknown children. So where's Robin? With the Titans. The who? GL also deliberately calls Booster Buster, so they're doing the name thing maliciously at this point. After the two teams defeat the villains, Batman shares a speech with the heroes to, in short, do superheroing right or not do it at all. But every hero was new to heroics once, and money is a motivator, so as Beetle and Booster walk off into the night, we see they've put up flyers advertising as superheroes for hire. Super villainy got you down? Neighborhood desperately in need of affordable superhuman intervention? Who you gonna call? 1-800-SUPER- Dudes. In 2023, this would probably come off as costume characters for kids' birthday parties, or a scam. I'm just saying, if you get a phone call and it's Booster Gold asking about your car's extended warranty, since this story was intended to happen back in the days before the team went unlimited, it certainly can canon if we shove it back to that time period. Hawk Girl's in her helmet and Jon Stewart doesn't have his goatee, you get the picture. But JL Adventures was often proving to be a different continuity. I don't know, man. Maybe just focus on the cool Easter egg on the opening page with the flyer for Crisis, probably a band name referencing those infinite Earths. You know, like the infinite DCAUs that Blue Beetle has tried to be a part of but can't. I mean, he got an action figure, that's cool, right? And some alternate universe Blue Beetle doppelganger was in that Crisis on Two Earths movie that's kind of canon. Red Beetle? Is this guy named Red Beetle? I don't know, they don't tell us. Maybe these hundreds of books in the DCAU art style that came out over the last few years, he's gotta be in at least one of those, right? 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 Why is he listed in the Justice League roster like every book, but he's not actually there? Blue Beetle's in Batman the Brave and the Bold and Young Justice and Justice League Action and a bunch of video games, but those aren't DCAU. He's in the Decamu, but there's an M in there that the DCAU doesn't have. Isn't that enough? Isn't that self-explanatory? Suffering scarabs, my friends. Blue Beetle got his own DC showcase short in 2022. It's a hilarious spoof on 60 superhero cartoons, but it's definitely not the DCAU. <laughs> but at long last, we were blessed with Justice League Infinity, a comic from Justice League Unlimited animated series writers J.M.D. Mateus, also known for his writing with Keith Giffen on Justice League International, and James Tucker, with art by Ethan Beavers and colors by Nick Filardi, who Ted interviewed for the channel a little while back. Go watch that after this and all of our Justice League Infinity coverage videos because those are, those are plentiful and good and uh, oh god. The team used this opportunity to bring in the Blue Beetle to be featured alongside his best friend Booster Gold, as well as the elongated man who third 
wheeled a bit into the blue and gold exclusive bromance. While Booster and Elongated Man fight over pieces of cake, Beetle tells them to behave, there's no need to act like children. The Flash retorts, we're in deep trouble if Blue Beetles become the voice of maturity around here. But is this evidence of Blue Beetle finally making his way into DCAU canon? Yojimbo of the DCAU resource fan site tweeted at James Tucker to verify whether or not Blue Beetle was just a friend of the Flash's there for his birthday or a full-fledged member of the League, and Tucker confirmed that Beetle was a member now. Blue Beetle was absent for most of the rest of the series, save for Batman grabbing his foot for support in issue number two, until number seven showed him as Amazo 2's wave of destruction stretched across the multiverse. After the good guys inevitably won, Beetle was once again dealing with his teammates' cake-eating habits, judging the Flash for shoveling cake down his throat at super speed. And when the League catches word that, somehow, Grodd returned, Beetle asks the Flash, who are you kidding, West? You love this stuff, which shows that Beetle uh, somehow knows the Flash's secret identity before the series ends with the team running off into the sunset. And the adventure continues again. So, yeah. Because the Justice League Infinity comic was created by co-writers who worked together on the animated series, and since nothing major contradicts the DCAU we know by the end of the story, we can safely say that the Blue Beetle has finally found his way into the DC animated universe fair and square. Good. Good. It only took about 30 years to get there, with plenty of false starts along the way, but the Blue Beetle is here to stay. Or at least, Ted Kord is, Jaime Reyes and Dan Garrett are different matters entirely. It's pretty cool that a character whose legal status in electronic media was iffy just a few years ago is now all over the place. So my question of the day is, what other DC characters do you hope someday become an official part of the DCAU? Maybe it's someone we never saw at all, like one of those Titans members, or maybe someone else who appeared in a retconned comic run, like Anarchy. Heads up, another new t-shirt, strut your stuff as the one and only Turquoise Tarantula. This is on the merch store now, as well as that very Allen shirt I mentioned last video. The berry one is only available through the end of August, and Turquoise Tarantula is only here through September, so get them now! Go! That's all for today, folks. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and thanks as always to all our Patreon supporters for supporting us so supportively. And if you haven't watched that gigantic DCEU timeline video we put out a few weeks ago, you need to watch that. Why haven't you watched that? Please! Now sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Especially if they're plane sized, where you have to descend from a rope to evade them because that is horrifying. Thanks for watching, and always remember to watch and read your superhero material with an inquisitive mind. After all, around here anyway, we pretty commonly ask, Will it canon? That is the question. I think I'll go home now.